Chicago Rabban. Unconventional and unclassifiable, Pakon Rabban is a visionary designer who uses innovative materials for his creations. As an architect and artist, he would break the traditional approach to garment construction by using pliers to shape metal onto the mannequins. Born in the Spanish-based country, he was initially named as Francesco Rabandena, but unfortunately due to the Spanish Civil War, he and his mother, who was a head seamstress for Balenciaga, had to flee to France. This is where he assumed the name Pac Rapan. D'abord, c'est une femme. Ma mère me disait que mon fils a tous les droits quand tu avais une femme. Tu as tous les droits sauf un. Tu n'as pas le droit de détruire la beauté d'une femme. He then trained as an architect and used his knowledge to come up with avant-garde creations for haute couture houses. Paco Rabanne made his first into the fashion scene by making models walk down the runway to the song Matos en Meurt by Pierre Boulez. There, he presented over 12 unwearable dresses in contemporary materials. As an architect major, he would also bring architectural elements into fashion by introducing never-seen-before materials into the world of couture. Therefore, his works could be conceived as visionary and avant-gardiste. In the fashion industry, we could consider him as the metallurgist designer as his clothes are fabricated out of metal. This is why Coco Chanel even qualified him as the fashion metallurgist. His very first fashion show in 1966 was a kind of artistic performance with a rejection of the conventional rules of haute couture. Thus, Paco Rabanne showed us that fashion isn't limited to a fabric weave. He even introduced futuristic caprices that are made out of metal and plastic. So now let's talk about some of the materials in the Paco Rabanne house. The sequin, metal, and plastic savoir-faire is eminent to the Paco Rabanne image. Since its beginnings, Paco Rabanne has used modern materials to create its pieces. For instance, he would cut the plastic into geometric shapes and assemble them with metal rings and rivets to create affordable jewelry. This savoir-faire would be incorporated into male hats, belts, and futuristic visors. Throughout his collections, he would incorporate even more unexpected materials. So as the years go on, he would introduce fluorescent leather, habit Dashery buttons, scarves, reflectors, laser discs, and there was even one where he used fibered embroidery. Now let's talk about some of the more iconic accessories by Paco Rabanne, and by that I mean the 1969 bag. So this mythical bag, created and conceptualized by Paco Rabanne, takes form without the use of needles and threads as it is made out of metal. And this is also what kind of differentiates a Paco Rabanne bag from the others is that it is made out of very good quality metal such as aluminium, steel, rhodoite and sometimes he even rubber into his pieces. Since there are a lot of metal in his designs, this is why I feel like the Paco Rabanne woman resembles a sort of warrior in armor. She is strong, she is independent and this spirit is quite present throughout his ready to wear collections. And by the late 1990s, very famous designers such as Olivia Rustin, as you may know who has worked for Balmain, would help bring Paco Rabanne's image into reality by drawing his vision into life. A very amusing concept that Paco Rabanne made is the one day dress. And this concept, I find it to be quite funny because it's a dress that is made out of paper. The idea was that since wedding dresses are only worn once anyway, he thought, why not just make them in paper? He had this idea to kind of sell these disposable dresses in vending machines, and he did. So instead of having a Coca-Cola, you have now a Paco Rabanne dress. You might have also heard of Paco Rabanne perfumes, as they are very popular. So he started his perfume line in 1969 with a perfume known as Galandre. Then he developed the Paco Rabanne perfume. The designer also temporarily developed a line called Giffo, which aims to reduce production cost by making universally sized clothes. This idea is also very synonymous with Isimiyaki's concept of a piece of cloth. Today, Paco Rabanne has Julian Dosena as its creative lead we could consider or imagine that the future of Paco Rabanne is going to continue to develop their metal sequence, but this time in different colors, and merge the untouched boundaries between unconventional and practical fashion. Since fashion today has become more mainstream, we can see how Paco Rabanne kind of adapt to these trends by designing dresses for the ready-to-wear market. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Fashion Simplified. I hope we see each other another time. Bye!